welcome to Gabriel's 3D Printing. Today we're going to be looking at this pangolin uploaded by a Mao Chan. First things first, we're going to go down to the developer notes, see if they have any specifications. And they say that they're using ABS filament, so not our standard PLA. And they are using a resolution of 0.2 millimeters, and that they have it scaled at 100%, which is just normal size. They say also that you shouldn't print any smaller than 75% of the original model size. And that for that, you should be using a 0.5 millimeter layer resolution. Now, once you're satisfied and happy with all that, we're going to go up here to the download all files. And once you do, you're going to have a folder similar to this with a ton of STLs. Now, don't worry, it might be overwhelming at first, but we're going to take our time and look through all these or tell you what you should be printing. Now, clearly, you're going to have to print each leg individually. So you're going to have four legs, you're going to have to print and same thing with the base which is this little save pangolin base down here where he's sitting on. With the body, you can either print it as one entire piece, or you can print it in, I believe, in like three or four pieces. I strongly suggest you print it in one piece. It's always better to print everything in one piece. If you do the assembly, you might have a little bit of trouble with things sticking together or coming off. So I recommend you do it in one piece. The only reason you shouldn't do it in one piece is if your printer bed is too small. So we're going to print it in one piece. So with the files, he has them separated with uh, PLA and ABS, which is the material or the filament you are using. More than likely you're using PLA, but uh, check what you're using. If you're using PLA or ABS, then that's going to depend on what you select here. So first things first, you're going to need the base which is this top one over here, base STL. So if you want to select multiple files, just hold the control button on your keyboard. So we're going to select the base. Then we're going to select the left hind leg and then select either PLA or ABS. Now I'm using PLA. So for all these, I'm going to select the PLA. So we have base left hind PLA, and we also want to select the new left forelimb PLA. We're going to go down. We're going to select the new pangolin body all. Make sure it's all because there's A, B, C, and D. We want to print the body in one entire piece. So we're going to select the all. We're going to print the new right forelimb PLA STL. And then finally, we also want the right hind leg PLA STL. And once you selected all of those with the, like I said, the control and click, you literally just have to click on them and drag them to your slicer of choice and give it a few seconds to load in. Once it's loaded in, you should see at least six parts, which is the fully pangolin body, the four legs and the base. So for me right now, the pangolin is roughly 24 centimeters in length. And that's gigantic. I don't want a giant pangolin. So I'm going to scale it down and I'm going to scale it down to 75%. I've tried printing the pangolin at 50%, but there was some errors with the legs that didn't want to attach. So the developer as well said you should stay at 75% or higher. Now you can print 50%. Like I said, be expected to glue the legs on if you do do that. So with 75, you should still be fine. You shouldn't have any of the issues. Everything on the model should work as intended. So in order to scale anything, we're going to click on it on each individual part and we're going to go down to this third one down here. Sorry, the second one down here scale. We're going to make sure uniform scaling is on and we're going to change this 100 percent to 75 and then press enter. And that should scale that that should scale every single axis on that body to 75 percent. And we have to do that for every single object here. Not just one part. So every single thing should be down to 75 percent if you choose to scale it. You can print it at 100 percent if you want. Like I said, it's too big for me, so I don't want to print it uh, at 100%. And that's that. Let's go on to print settings. First things first, we're going to select the layer height. In order to do that, we're going to click on this uh, tab up here. And under profile, we're going to click here. And we're going to select a layer height of 0 0.2 millimeters, which is the recommendation from the developer. You can go finer if you want, which will give you higher quality, but it will take a much uh, longer time to print. 
So if whenever you click your uh, layer height, if this pops up, simply click on discard to erase all previous profile modifications. Next, we're going to go to support. We do not need any supports for this model. If you print it at 100% or 75%, you do not need any type of supports. You may think so due to all the red at the bottom, but there's not going to be any supports needed for this one. So make sure that's unchecked. Next is build plate adhesion. Now, with this one, if you have poor bed adhesion, then you probably will need a brim. You can do that by clicking here and selecting brim. But for me, I don't have too many issues with bed adhesion, considering I have a mirror bed. So if you have issues, if you have had issues in the past with prints not sticking to the bed, add a brim. But it is going to be a little bit of a hassle taking it off at the end. I'm just going to warn you with that. So more than likely, if you have a magnetic bed like an Ender 3 or Ender 5, you shouldn't really need any build plate adhesion for this one. Like I said, if you do have issues, if you had issues in the past with it, then you probably will need some build plate adhesion for most of these. But for me, I don't need it, so we're going to leave it at skirt. And that's that. We do not have to change anything else. We are more than set, so simply click on the slice button and give it a few seconds to slice up. Once it's finished slicing, you should be given a time estimate of roughly 13 hours and 40 minutes, but that will depend on your printer and the settings that you selected, as well as a estimated filament usage of 21 grams. Now we always preview the print, take a look around, see if anything weird or funky is going on, and everything looks pretty normal, there's nothing out of the ordinary, so all we have to do now is save the file and send it over to your printer. Assembly is not too difficult, but it will take some time. First, make sure you do have the pangolin in one entire piece. You have the four legs and the base. If there are rough spots on your print, now is the time to grab a piece of sandpaper and sand them off. First, we're going to remove the support that was pre-designed by the designer. It's near the mouth and the nose of the pangolin. The best way to do this is to turn the model upside down and to grab a pair of pliers and hold on the support firmly and simply pull. Don't be too harsh, but definitely apply some force. If the support removal did leave some spots on the face, you can definitely grab a piece of sandpaper and sand as well, but you should be able to see that nose and mouth pretty clearly. Next, we're going to add some flexibility to this stiff pangolin. In order to do this, simply twist the pangolin back and forth until the joints move freely. Some scales may be a little tough and won't want to move at all, and in order to alleviate that, you're going to have to grab a screwdriver and squeeze it in there, but just ever so slightly. Don't push your screwdriver all the way in because you will damage the scales. Once again, do this for every single joint because every joint is intended to move freely, as well as the headpiece. You'll know you're done whenever the actual pangolin can roll up in a ball. Next, we're going to break the joints on two of the legs. Now the ones that do have joints you can definitely twist those so just grab them firmly and give it a small little twist but be careful because they may break pretty easily.
Next, you're going to find the groove in which the spots belong to on the bottom of the pangolin. There should be four total spots. For position and orientation, the feet with the gears are going to be at the very top of the model. You're also going to make sure that for each leg, the clips, which are only on one side of the feet, the top clips, are towards the center of the model, so they're not visible on the outside. So once again, the joints are at the very front of the model, and the clips are geared towards the innards of the model itself. So you cannot see the gears whenever the feet are in place. Repeat this process for the hind legs as well. Once you place all legs in, the pangolin should be able to stand on itself, but the legs may fall from time to time, so be ready for that. Here's the final model once the assembly has been completed. The model looks great, and has no defects, and everything works as intended. This is already one of my favorite models considering it's so fun to play with and everything moves and bends, basically just like a real pangolin. Plus you also have that stand over there that you can place this pangolin on. So in order to put it on there all you gotta do is fold the pangolin into the ball shape and then just simply lay it on there. Although this was a little bit longer print, it's definitely worth it, so if you want it, then by all means go ahead and print it.